My screen is visible to everyone. Yes, ma'am. Oh, this is not a topic right now. Okay. Today the topic is sun salutation. Okay. We need what are the things going to be asked in sun salutation is a it's steps. Steps means there are seven postures, right? And there it's repetition. They will they will ask you at ninth position which asan is there, at twelfth position which asan is there, uh, on eleventh, on tenth, like this uh, on count wise they will ask you its position. Okay, then what will be the next question? Could they ask? They would ask you regarding the inhalation and exhalation. See, this is a picture which will make you remember very easily. There is a exhalation, inhalation, exhalation is there. Okay. So uh, it shows clearly the asan. I mean, we can get through the this. Uh, which posture is this? Pranam. And we have to exhale. So you need to remember this very uh, from this uh, easily. I mean, the picture gives you a very easy way to learn, OK, or to remember. Now it is visible to everything. I mean, to everyone. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. I have to continue. Okay. Then, uh, the, in the next posture, we have to exhale. And at which posture we have to inhale? You need to remember all these points. Okay. The one is the posture. Second, inhalation and exhalation. Third thing, which they definitely and they, even in the last attempt they asked this question. In which asan, which mantra is being is, is to be chanted? Which mantra? This Om Mitrai Nama. This is the starting one. Then Raviyahe Nama. Raviya Nama. Om Suryaya Nama. Om Bhanave Nama. Om Khagaye Nama. Pushane Nama. Hiran Garbhaye Nama. Marichaye Nama. Adityaye Nama. Savitri Namha, Arkai Namha, Bhaskaraya Namha. Okay, so you need to remember all these months. Uh, there's also a mnemonic, uh, it depends person to person where you uh, and how you have to remember. Okay, uh, you, we, we, going, we will remember accordingly. Okay, uh, how to remember all these, like uh, they are kind of a mnemonic is like people do it is like me ra su bha khag like they make a like me it's up to you me r, and then su and bha like different types of mnemonics different type of people okay so it's not necessary to make it a mnemonic like this it's up to you how will you, you how you can remember it how you can memorize it it's up to you okay so but the, this question is very common you have to remember this okay this question is very very important even in the last attempt i'm just telling you in the last attempt in the june attempt this question asked that which uh, on this whole posture which uh, uh um this posture on this number this which asan which mantra is shall be chanted this way Okay, and then yes, uh, they will ask you some you know, some of the general uh, contraindication. Some of the general, um, I mean, I have never seen that uh, 
or the sun saturation they will ask you the contraindications but still it's very common nowadays they they might ask you regarding this so uh, it's not harmful to even just go through from this okay the practice of surya namaskar should be immediately discontinued okay when there's an acute fever inflammation boils rashes okay due to the excess of toxins in the body what happens <coughs> i'm sorry excess of toxins when in, in the body is there there is no uh, the person who has not uh, uh, following the steps of shat karma not cleansing technique techniques are being followed or if the person is followed but he is suffering from some sort of toxins in the body or could be anything any sort of toxins like um, it must be like uh, the one is facing the articaria the one is facing the psoriasis the one is facing any lungs problem or the one is facing some sort of kidney problem okay if there is some sort of problems and the one is guided to practice a surya namaskar it shall be practiced under the uh, practitioner a good practitioner or the one should shall, shall not do it in a like in a in a, in a rush uh, the one should perform slowly and in a open environment okay no, but what we have to say is the one person the person should not perform Surya Namaskar when there is a uh, fever, acute inflammation, boils, rashes, and excess due to the oh sorry, occur due to the excess uh, excess of toxins in the body. Then toxins have been eliminated. This is the part of the Shatkarm Kriyas and other things, the medicines and everything. Surya Namaskar includes semi inverted postures, right? So the caution for the inverted postures apply. It should not be practiced for the people suffering from the high BP, coronary artery disease means heart disease. By those who have had a stroke, it may be overstimulate or damage weak heart, weak heart or blood vessel system. Yes, it will definitely. We have already been studied in the anatomy classes that how the important heart is and how delicate its uh, uh, its veins and arteries are okay especially the coronary, uh, coronary artery supply okay it should also be avoided in the case of hernia why in the case of hernia because uh, an interstitial uh, tuberculosis why it is in, it is uh, avoided in those cases because it's been like there are so many asans which where we have to do on the better uh, in and out inhale and exhale is vigorously we have to do it means the one just the shift from one asan to another asan, then inhale and exhale is quite in a uh, in a hurry or another pressure that uh, the one cannot compact with it. Second, in hernia, the calmness, the coolness is required. Okay, not the heat is required. Okay, the heat may uh, give you the adverse effect on it. Okay, and then people with the back conditions, yes, if it is. Uh, acute or severe do not perform or do not practice the uh, Surya Namaskar if the back conditions are not being recommended by the doctor. Slip disc, of course, the one is has a slip disc, they can't even move or they cannot bend properly. The one should not practice the Surya Namaskar. Then Shiatika, of course. In the Shiatika, yes, there are lots of asana which you can avoid and you can uh, let the other person guide. Uh, okay, you can perform the Shiatika. Uh, uh, Surya Namaskar, but in so many areas, in so many studies, in so many researches has been shown, the one should not guide to do to do the uh, Surya Namaskar ever till the situation will uh, in the in the situation of recovering or the symptoms are not being persist, uh, persisting uh, as the shatika. Like sometimes some people have the shatika problem. Like uh, two days it is active, and after a few days. And for the couple of months, it is not active, but it's just dormant. Shatika problem is not there. Then you can practice a Surya Namaskar. But in some of the researches, it has been found that if it is dormant, do not practice a Surya Namaskar. First, you need to go through with the Shatika, uh, uh, Shatika specified asan. So do not jump to the uh, sun salutation directly at first day. Okay? Only for the Shatika people. There are some uh, researches are even there. Okay? 
then alternate program okay during the onset of the menstruation if someone is having the onset menstruation one should not practice avoid it till the dates will be normal okay during the pregnancy of course in the pregnancy till the i mean uh, it is uh, like it, it comprises so many uh, series of asanas which will which would not helpful for the first, i mean for the mother to cope up with the body uh, like there are some sort of vomiting nausea is there nausea or vomiting during pregnancy is common why it is common because the one's body is not accepting that there is something is going on in the body that is a natural reaction natural reflex of the body to throw it out in in any of the manner okay that is why the in initial months of a pregnancy there is a vomiting nausea headaches are is very common fever sometimes the body is not normal feeling bp bp like low all this all this indication what it shows your body is not normal your body is try to uh, basically it is try to fighting it's like you know autoimmune kind of a reaction or uh, 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 your autoimmune uh, level is being started in your body that reaction is there that is why the one the mother is not feeling happy in the initial days those she is of course feeling happy but uh, the body biologically it is not allowing the uh, mother to feel happy so don't try do not practice it uh, and uh, rest the doctors prescribed whether it is uh, then doctor will have prescribed it whether it is advisable or not or the one mother can do it or not it depends on the mother's condition as well okay yes in the last following the child birth after the parturition means approximately 40 days after the delivery retoning uterine muscles it will take time so for the first 40 days or first 3 months it is avoided again it depends on the mother to mother okay general benefits practice of surya namaskar as a whole gives a great number of benefits we all know strengthen the back which again when the back ache is there do not perform but when the back ache is not there no symptoms is there then perform it and you will going to strengthen your back okay then helps balance the metabolism yes your uh, your jataragni the uh, fire bell, uh, digestive fire will definitely going to stimulate it really helps in relieving the belly fat and the fat from the body obesity person people should shall practice all this okay stimulates and balances all the system of the body all the system nervous system it includes nervous system as well okay including reproductive circulatory respiratory digestive they have not included the uh, nervous system but do include nervous system okay influence on the endocrine glands and uh, to balance the transition period between the childhood and the adolescent in growing children uh, children from 7 from the uh, from 7 years of 7 uh, years onward uh, we can uh, allow kids or children to practice surya namaskar before 7 years the body is not fully made up or the bones are still there to you know to grow or there are lots of glands are still growing the tissues are growing inside the body so we, uh, we majorly we do not suggest to do uh, yoga practice especially the surya namaskar before 7 7 years of age okay synchronizing the breath which i have told you uh, with the physical movements of surya namaskar ensure that the practitioner at least for a few minutes daily that uh, we have to do not we need not to rush from one posture to another posture Okay, from one to two, three, and then twelfth round, twelfth postures. Okay, we need not to rush. We have to do it very with the calmness, with the proper inhalation and exhalation. That is the real Surya Namaskar. They are talking about this. Okay, the breathness as deeply, rhythmically as possible, increasing mental clarity by bringing fresh oxygenated blood to the brain. Again, it comprises with the nervous system okay clear this much yes. i'm not practice it is not going to ask you but if you want to 
uh, read then in, until time to practice Surya Namaska is at the sunrise, of course, because the rays are so pure that your body will going to be detoxified not naturally. Okay, most peaceful time of the day uh, or the sunset. At the sunset, we generally avoid, but if the one can do the at the sunset, uh, the one should be toxins free. Okay, the one on the initial days or at the begin, begin as a beginner should not practice on the sunset. That is something different. Okay, uh, the one who is already a good practitioner, a good yogi, a good sadhak, who always keep on doing or following all the yama niyams, that person can do on the sunset. This is not mentioned, but I'm telling you, which is uh, different from all of this. Okay. Which is not written over here, and usually you will you will not going to find this. Whenever possible, possible practice in the open air, not whenever. No, you cannot perform at the during the like uh, uh, afternoon time. You cannot perform. Okay, if the one would perform, then there is a ex uh, excess of heat produced in in uh, in the person's body or in the sadhak body, which will definitely going to harm in so many ways in so so many ways but the yogi who is already uh, following the yam niyam asana pranayam is following all the steps and with the due diligence the person is following that person can practice the surya namaskar even in the daytime is at the afternoon time because that is called as a tap okay that is known as a tap but for the normal people uh, those who are i mean uh, suffering from so many elements is it is not advisable okay and yes in open air facing the rising sun so in namaskar is always being practiced like that and time is always stomach shall be empty this is very common i mean as a your practitioner we all know this is very common thing i mean in general okay so your surya namaskar is completed i'm going to start with the asana today okay Is it visible to everyone? I don't think so. The font is very small, but it's okay. Yes. We can zoom and you can do it. No, no, I think I have the one. I have two previous. Just give me a moment. Yes. Why is not refreshing? Is it visible? To everyone? Yes, but why it is available on the portrait level? I mean, would you be able to see on the portrait or as a, uh, in a no, landscape? Landscape, landscape. Landscape, all right. Okay. My laptop is not showing that way. Okay. Okay. There are the different, uh, there's a sequence of asan we have to follow. What is the sequence of that asan? There is a sequence at first we have to do the asana in the standing position, then sitting, prone, spine, and then balancing asana. Why this is this sequence? Is there anyone who can tell me? Why we should follow the sequence? anyone the, because to balance the heart rate ma'am because from standing sitting and lying the heart uh, uh, pumping will be normal we first yes. we lied and uh, suddenly jump to the standing means uh, that a heart uh, beat will be more that's why yes exactly these are the this is a major cause 
to follow the sequence. Second, the blood circulation is related with the heart, right? The circulation goes to your brain, okay, and to your lower body. If the one is continuing standing asanas, like there is no sitting asana is there, there is no prone, supine, and a balancing asana, balancing asana to sleep. It's just there are lots of asana which can be uh, uh, balancing asana available, or the one can practice standing balance asana, right? So try to avoid the only one direction of a blood circulation. We have to give blood circulation to each and every body part. Before I start this, this is an asana, okay? Before I start this, in real life, what is the sequence is after the uh, shatkan kriya or the cleansing techniques, the one should do the sukshma vyayam. Okay, which is also known by the warm up kriyas. Maybe you have heard it before, uh, heard before uh, on this. There are 48 kriyas from Dhrid Bharmachari Ji. Uh, it is available and uh, it is divided in four different parts. There are lots of kriya, lots of kriya means like three kriyas for each, set, I mean, for each area, for the, each region, three to four, these type of. Uh, kriyas have been uh, divided for the whole of the body. And this, then the third thing uh, is the asan. Okay, asan is something which is the firm or very uh, like steady kind of like very. There is a still sukham asana is there. Means you have to hold the posture for the longer term and be there, smile and feel happy about that pos posture in any of the posture. Okay, but in Sukshamayam, there is no stay Sukhamasana. Okay, it is just a rotation. Rotation means it is a cyclic moment or uh, the moments of your body which helps you to maintain or open up the blockages in your body. Like a warm up series. Warm up series, what, what is the cause of the, or what is the reason for warm up series is to maintain or to open up all the blockages so that we can do or we can perform the major things. Major things are here is asan, and then in the normal life, uh, uh, in like if someone is in the sports, they do the warm up kri, uh, warm up uh, uh, series, and they do for the and they directly jump to the sports or any of the sports they when they are going to play. Okay, so this is important, though it is not written here, not even in this flavors, but the uh, series shall be must known by the normal practitioners okay now we, i have to move with the argh sorry in the standing asan in the standing asan in your course there are uh, seven yes there are seven asan in standing okay in sitting there are eight asan today we're going to cover both just uh, they are only i am just giving you the giving you the brief about all those uh, benefits and the contraindications. I will send it this PDF in the group. Okay. Are there? Okay. It is clear, right? Any question? No, no. Okay, okay. Are the Kati Chakra Asan? Are the means what? Half. Means half. Half. Kati means sides, your waist. Chakra means wheel. Okay. Half waist side wheel pose in English. If I break down for yourself, for you to remember it. Okay. Though it is not that difficult to remember. Okay. So this is how we have to do it. I'm not writing any technique because they will not going to ask you the technique. Okay. So directly, it is directly with the benefits and the contraindication. So what are the benefits? Benefits are this. What these are the benefits? Okay. In the pink, there is a benefit. In purple, the contraindications. Okay. The first is a dysfunctional uterine bleeding. Sometimes uh, uterine bleeding is not under the control. It is just showing some of the uh, abnormalities. So it also helps in balancing or maintaining all the uterine bleeding, okay? And the dyslep uh, dyslep dyslipidemia. 
this is the increase in the LDL, which is for the bad cholesterol is, has been increased. Okay. And to maintain that the bad cholesterol, that it should be regulated. And the high cholesterol, which is already decreased, it is to maintain that. It will not going to increase those way and it is not going to decrease that way. It will regulate basically. Okay. Then respiratory system. How the respiratory will the respiratory system is going to affect in this? Because this is the posture. See, this is a posture. How the one would feel any respiratory effects over here? Because we uh, our lungs also uh, like horizontally plus and there is which direction? Horizontal and vertical. Okay, the horizontally I'm uh, stretching my body upwards or in a sideways basically. Sideways I'm stretching it. So the uh, they are the muscles which will uh, helps or which will get the blood circulation more, and my lungs uh, can uh, breathe more uh, properly. Uh, it got the area more properly or more area to expand. Okay, this is just a, and uh, these are also kriyas also available in the forty eight kriyas uh, in. Uh, Okay, there are lots of kriyas which help you to maintain the um, uh, uh, the respiratory system for vakshital, we say vakshital, chest region. There are lots of kriyas which help you to give the expansion for your lungs region. Okay, and for the respiratory and the obesity, of course, to release it from the fats, it burns the fats because it is also related with the lipid level. Okay. This is the one of the point from the obesity. Okay. Don't relate the obesity is only point related with the dyslexia. Okay. Then spinal and vertebral column, little problem. Again, the one who is suffering those days, do not perform the symptoms per se, do not perform. Okay. Liver, lungs, kidneys. Okay. For the liver, because liver on the where is the liver resides just below the respiratory system. Where the lungs, which I have already uh, talked about. Respiratory system, kidneys, it's in the back of the side, on the back of just below your, or you could say behind your liver. Okay, it helps eliminate their toxins. Your kidney will become more active, your liver becomes more active. So that the toxins which is which are there in your body in, in, in the form of food, in because of the food or in the form of the uh, air particles, it will thrown out easily. Okay, uh, helps you to clean out easily increasing the height in children yes when the directions have been changed the glands will work more properly hormones will work properly brain uh, will get the oxygen the blood uh, oxygen rich blood brain will get and it will uh, uh, i mean the performance of the nervous system will improve that is why how the children's height also improved uh children's height also it's not only depend on the uh, on the uh, stretching, basically, it is also held, uh, also based on the glandular functional as well. Okay, relieving the constipations, of course, because we have seen in the shank prakshalan, in shank prakshalan, we have seen this that sideways movement helps to helps us to eliminate the toxins or the food particles or any of the. Uh, uh, the microbes are still there, the bacteria is there in an uh, intestine lining, okay? Burning the belly fat, which is, I mean, obvious to understand from all this, okay? What are the contraindications? Please, uh, yes. Hip, knee, or shoulder problems. Why the hip? Because there is a lot of problem in the waist. This problem are there, okay? Knee problems are there. Knee, why the knee problems? Because it is not able to stand properly and the sciatica problem may rise over here. Though it is helpful, but uh, uh, during those days where the sciatica problem has not been cured, do not allow the person to perform. Knees problem, there are lots of knee pro knees problem or the muscular problems are there, which does not allow the person to move properly or to move the body in a, uh, uh, in the left or right direction, okay. And uh, if we, okay, when um, in anatomy you have, of course, in anatomy you have studied about the knees, 
the muscles which is associated with the knees if you see the functioning or how they these uh, the muscles are attached so a normal person can perform but the person who is suffering from the any sort of a muscular problem around the knee then the person who not able to perform okay second reason of course there is a synovial fluid which does not allow the uh, practitioner to stand properly yes there are other uh, ways to perform which is on the chair but we are not talking here okay about it this is not on, in our syllabus the shoulder problems uh, shall not practice abdominal and spinal surgeries hernia abdominal inflammation and in the pregnancy and in the menstruation in the menstruation it will cause you more cramps okay won't help you it's 95 haan ji it's 95 mom oh i didn't notice i'm sorry so we're not going to cover this today you, you share this mom i will share don't worry i'll share this we'll do a revision on this haan ji today you share it tomorrow we'll do a revision of this mom okay okay but uh, uh, at what time you will going i mean you you are having your class it's from 10 the next class you are talking about mm -hmm. next class i think uh, environment is at 1 at 1 so if you can give me the uh, next 10 10 minutes so i'll can cover this much sorry i'm fine ma'am i don't know about the others because other <laughs> no if you take time i want to take time because it's already uh, late quite late and uh, allow me i just want to discuss regarding this okay first finish the session okay i'll stop the recording first <laughs>